Hi, I'm Natalie with the Commerce Civic Library, and today we're going to be making mermaid ears. When you get your um, craft bag from your local library, it will have a couple different things in it. First off, the base, if you'll have one of these. It is your base frames piped onto a piece of tool, and um, I don't remember the list of everything that goes in it. I was just going to show them what to do with it. To get from this to these, um, we will be using air dry clay, school glue, and a little bit of paint. In the pack, you should have a small thing of clay that we're going to use to build up the base to give it this 3D effect and also hold it all together. Okay, when you get ready to start, we're going to take this and then we're going to cut off the excess tool. We're going to cut off enough to where all the tool on the inside is still there, but we're cutting off the outside and we're going to try to curve it inwards. Try to make it look like fins. After we get everything cut out, we're going to take our clay and start building up the center and towards the um, I would say noodly bits, so that's totally not what they're called. I'm just using some Fimo I got from Clearance, but any type of air dry clay will work fine. Now, if you're working on a table that you absolutely cannot mess up like I am at work right now, make sure you put something down to protect the surface, like parchment paper, wax paper, printer paper, even newspaper. Just something, because this is going to get messy very fast. This is your warning. Now I'm going to break my chunk in half so they can have equal parts for each ear. And first off, for the center portion, we're going to start by making a noodle, a little worm thing to go in that center bit. We're going to start curving it around this. If you need it to help stick better, get a little bit of clay left over and put it underneath. so we can have more to grab onto. We want to encase this hot glue base in clay. If you need help blending the pieces of clay together, just dip your fingers in a little bit of water and use that to blend it thin. We want it thicker at this base, and then we're gonna thin it out until it blends with the hot glue. After we get done building up the center section, then we're going to do a smaller noodle that will go this way and this way, and then we're going to blend that into the center bit. If it doesn't want to stay together, just add a bit more water, and that'll help soften it up. After we get a noodle, we're going to break it in half so we can have equal portions for each um, middle section. Here I'm just using my nail to help blend all of the bits of clay together and smooth out the surface. If you don't have fingernails, you can always use the edge of the scissors that you were cutting off the tool with. Don't cut yourself, but it is a tool that you're able to use. forget to put a little bit of clay underneath to help seal it in place. Fortunately, the type of fabric we're using, the tool, is there's a lot of holes because it's netting, so we're able to push the clay through the holes and create a strong seal. Now I'm going to use some of the extra clay to lengthen these top and bottom pieces. You want the top and bottom pieces to go a little bit past the middle pieces so that they look more aligned, more natural. After you get all of the base clay done, we're going to wet our finger and smooth some of these creases and further blend the clay. Right here because these ended up being a bit fatter than this part. Just using the 
excess clay to patch any cracks that I've tried to form. And now I'm going to pinch this inwards to make a little bit of a um, angle, like a peak on this intersection. to do all of that on this one. Don't freak out if it doesn't look exactly the same. They're siblings, not twins. Things that look perfect don't look real anyway. So don't stress out over it if it doesn't look quite right. Now after you have your things sculpted, before we let them sit and dry, we're going to firm up the tool section in between. We're going to start building it up into a paintable service, surface using school glue. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a couple of strings of thin glue. We want to make sure we brush it out into as thin as possible so it doesn't take forever to dry. We don't want it to be super thick either. So we're just going to take and brush this out thinly going from the inside to the edges of the thin. Super slow. Don't use too much glue. After we get this done, we're gonna let it dry overnight, and then I'm gonna show you how to paint it. This is what your ears will look like once they have dried. This will be nice and hard, and we'll have all of the nice um, shininess of the dried school glue. And it should be nice and silky, and you shouldn't be able to feel too much of the texture of the netting, because it needs to be solid enough with few enough holes to where we're able to paint on it. Okay, for mixing our paint, we're going to mix it in the school glue so that it'll be clear enough for light to shine through. And we're going to mix different ratios for the sections that we painted. The um, inner section is going to be the most opaque because we wanted to hide our boring human ears. And then as we start moving outwards to the thin, we're going to start mixing more and more school glue so that it becomes more and more transparent. The aim is that it's so it's opaque here, but then transparent here. So after this bit sticks out of your hair, the shine, the light will shine through and make a pretty color. Okay. I am using blue paints because I am making mermaid ears, but depending on what color scheme you want to go for, these don't have to be mermaid ears. They can be dragon ears, wood nymphs, fairies, whatever the heck you want. It just depends on how you want to go about painting it. So right now I'm just going to use straight blue, straight acrylic paint, and I'm going to start out with the um, sections we did in clay. start adding more and more glue. Just mixing it with your paintbrush and thinning the paint out. If you have any hot glue strings that end up being painted, it's fine, they can be veins. If you want for an extra touch, you can add a different shade of the color you're working with, or maybe a complementary color. For these, I'm going in with a little bit lighter blue. And I'm blending it in, letting a little bit overlap with where I put the darker blue on the fence, so they can start blending together.
okay. Now I'm gonna rinse my brush off again and now we're going to use a little bit of light blue with the most amount of school blue. So we can have a really thin, transparent turquoise color on the outer edges. So a lot of school blue, a little bit of color. Everything's painted. I'm going to go back in with the lighter blue color again and add some highlights onto the clay. That triangle section I did earlier where I pinched it and made a top part, I'm going to highlight those peaks. The peaks of the clay that I made. of the leftover dark blue and I'm going to blend it in. Blend it outwards so it's not as harsh looking. And that would also be the time to repaint any of the hot blue sections that maybe didn't get enough coverage the first time. After the paint on your ears dries and you're able to attach them to hair elastic, or perhaps on a headband, something to where you can stick it onto your ears. We're leaving this part up to you because some people are more comfortable with some things and some with others, so yeah, you do you. <laughs>